Hey y'all, and welcome back to Graphic Content, the show where I design something for one of my favorite wrestlers while telling you why they're one of my favorite wrestlers. And today, we're talking about a guy that genuinely might be the catalyst for why we're all here today. A guy that carried independent wrestling on his back for ages and helped us get to a place where indie wrestling can be just as viable an option for performers as the big leagues. And of course, I'm talking about none other than Colt Boom Boom Cabana. You know, it feels weird saying this, but I feel like a lot of today's wrestling fans, especially those who hopped in the fandom due to AEW, don't fully realize the scope and impact that Cabana had on the industry. They just see him as another indie legend that AEW or ROH pulls out for a cheap pop now and again without really realizing that everything from wrestling podcasts to vlogs to even the t-shirts we're wearing were at least partly due to the influence of Colt Cabana. And it all starts in his luxurious studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast nowadays more gets seen as the spark that ignited a thousand lawsuits, but back in the day, it was genuinely a godsend for those looking to become bigger independent wrestling fans. Cabana gave talent that never really got the opportunity to showcase their personalities the opportunity to let people know who they really were, what they really enjoyed. It was truly an entryway into the heart, souls, and lives of those involved in the wacky world of independent wrestling. And through the art of wrestling and through this conduit of getting to meet a new independent wrestler every single week and learning their stories, the scene began to flourish with more people getting more bookings and getting more money. It led to the rise of ROH as a more serious competitor in the wrestling scene. It brought eyes to New Japan alongside the Bullet Club. Cabana's influence was so grand that even Bill Apter himself awarded Boom Boom the title of Independent Wrestling's Ambassador. Ambassador. He was literally the flag bearer for the industry itself. But the thing that I applaud Colt for the most is something that I actually find admirable in most professional wrestlers that do it. He found a way to make the most money taking the least bumps. I mean, not only did he adapt his wrestling style to a place where he's openly admitted he could wrestle this way until he's like 80, he's also found different avenues to make money, whether that was recording his adventures and publishing them as the Wrestling Road Diaries, doing live commentary events over bad movies and matches with Marty DeRosa, or selling literally every type of merchandise that he could think of. Uh, speaking of, Colt, uh, because I know you're totally watching this video, right? You don't happen to have any more of these work shirts in stock, do ya? I mean, like, I had one for the longest time, it was my favorite shirt, and I've lost it. Just, like, hit me up in the DMs and we'll figure something out. And when it comes to producing merchandise, we now come to what I think is Cabana's biggest piece of influence in the world of wrestling. And it's bringing pro wrestling tees into existence. I mean, I'm not saying it, the whole thing was Cabana's idea or whatever, but he had worked heavily with One Hour Tees in Chicago for years, and he was the first person to have a shop available on PWTs when it eventually launched. I mean, he is literally the face of that company on billboards in Chicago, and through pro wrestling Tees, more and more independent wrestlers are able to make a living by putting up merchandise that they don't have to worry about storing or carrying with them to shows. And more and more really, really good designers are being given the opportunity to produce merch designs for people they never thought they would have gotten the opportunity to work with. <coughs> You know, I genuinely think it's safe to say, without the spark of Colt Cabana's actions back in the early 2010s, the landscape of professional wrestling would look drastically different just a decade later. Without the art of wrestling, we may not have had the rise in independent wrestling interest that led to guys like Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn being signed to the WWE. We may not have had the massive growth in ROH in New Japan that led to the birth of AEW. Or, you know, we at least wouldn't have their merch site. You see, I'm a big believer in the butterfly effect, and for me, Colt Cabana was the biggest butterfly beating his wings the hardest in generating the world of wrestling that we all know today. So there it is, another piece added to the pile and another wrestler talked about. You know what's weird, I think this 
might actually be the least I've ever talked about someone's actual wrestling in an episode. But make mo no mistake, Colt Cabana is like a really great wrestler. I think his match against Punk for his farewell match in ROH genuinely might be like one of my favorite two out of three falls matches of all time. But for me and for a lot of people, we didn't really know Colt as a wrestler first. We knew him as one of the first wrestling influencers. Oh god, oh, that feels fucking gross to say. Oh, yeah, but I guess it's kind of right. I don't know. But anyways, if you got any big Colt Cabana memories or stories, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I know this is just the tip of the iceberg on Cabana, and I'd love to hear and learn more down there. So leave a comment. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Fight Boy Show, and of course, hit up those DMs because my commissions are open. And of course, always remember to like, comment, subscribe, just do the YouTube stuff. And never forget, they's, them's, ladies and men, that when you are a Fight Boy, you're a Fight Boy for life.